Hello, medical science explorers! Today we're going to discuss pressures in systemic and pulmonary circulation. As all of you know, the heart, human heart, consists of four chambers. Uh, right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. And so we have two circuits. We have systemic, supplying blood to the body, and we have pulmonary circuit, the blood that goes to the lungs where it's going to be oxygenated. Great. And we have a order, we have a pulmonary arteries, um, we have pulmonary veins, and we have um, superior and inferior vena cava. Great. And most of you by now aware that a normal human blood pressure measured by a sphygma manometer um, is 120 over 80. And that's great. Um, and now we'll just get into each compor compartment and identify those pressures and try to build the connection so you'll be able to memorize them. Uh, the common mistake that the left ventricular pressure is equal to uh, systemic blood pressure. And this is not precisely right. The first part of it is correct that systolic pressure in the left ventricle is normally equal to the systemic blood pressure. However, the systolic pressure in the ventricle is not equal to diastolic pressure in the uh, circulation. That pressure is normally equal to zero. There is no pressure in the ventricle during diastole. All the valves are shut down, there is no blood coming in, the pressure is zero. And that's the thing about it. And if you look at the right ventricle, you will um, encounter the same picture. The diastolic pressure, even in the right ventricle, will be equal to zero. And that's great. Um, a good way to distinguish pressures in the right ventricle and the left ventricle uh, is that you got to keep in mind that left ventricle supplies blood to the entire body and it faces a great vascular resistance. To overcome that resistance, it requires a stronger uh, myocardium. So left ventricle is normally more massive uh, compared to the right ventricle. And the right ventricle um, does not encounter that amount of the peripheral circulation that faced by the left ventricle. Great. A great thing you gotta remember though, that the amount of blood pumped by the left ventricle and the right ventricle are actually equal. And it's supposed to be like that. If you pump pumping out some blood from the left ventricle, you want the same amount of blood to come back. Otherwise, you will stall the process of circulation. That's why you're going to have the same amount of blood coming out of the right ventricle just as the left ventricle. And that's normally, uh, that's what normally called as cardiac output. In a normal human, it's about five liters per minute. So we have five liters of me, uh, blood uh, coming out uh, from the left ventricle and the five liters per minute coming out from the right ventricle. Great. But as I mentioned, the pressure um, created by the right ventricle is significantly lower than pressure created by left ventricle because you don't have to overcome that resistance. And that pressure is 25 millimeters of mercury. And there you go, another number. 25 over zero is the pressure in the right ventricle. Uh, pressure uh, in the pulmonary circuit 
will have a number for diastolic and that number is 8. Therefore, you um, break down of the pressure in the pulmonary circulation is 25 over 8. Great, 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 great. Uh, let's go further. Right um, atrium. Right atrium. Uh, right atrium will have a lower, significantly lower number. Um, and that number is 2 to 6 millimeters of mercury. And that's going to be the same pressure in um, major veins. Okay, of the systemic, systemic, major systemic veins. It's going to be 2 to 6 millimeters of mercury. All right, that's great. And um, that's a pressure that is called central venous pressure. As an important clinical implication that by measuring uh, central venous pressure, you can assess hydration status of your patient. You can see if patient is dehydrated or maybe overhydrated by uh, over infusion the patient okay and then from that point you, you will change the way you treat the patient okay you, you will tra change the treatments accordingly great 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 and that's uh, that's the pressure that's normally uh, measured by um, introducing a central uh, catheter central catheter that's going to go into your uh, right or left subclavian vein, as well as the jug, internal jugular vein. You can measure. Uh, you can measure the pressure, central venous pressure in internal jugular vein. So that's going to be your central catheter, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll have the probe. Great. Now, how would you um, measure pressure? in the left atrium or pulmonary veins. You know, that would be a quite invasive procedure. You know, one way um, could be you insert the catheter and you poke a hole and you get here and you measure. Well, no one wants to get the hole poked through the left atrium. And the way it's normally done is we introduce Swangans catheter. Swangans catheter insert into the femoral vein um, and it goes through the in inferior vein cava, goes on the right atrium, bypasses tri tri tricuspid valve, and it goes in the pulmonary, one of the pulmonary arteries. Uh, the great thing about Swangans catheter, it has a probe that can measure um, pressure and it has a balloon. It can inflate or deflate. Normally the, uh, more, uh, normally the balloon is in a deflated state and otherwise you will have what? Pulmonary embolus, right? You don't want that. You want the blood, the oxygenated blood to come out and go to the lungs, get oxygenated and you know, come back to the left atrium. So let's, let's introduce our, uh, this quick diagram. And it's going to be our, uh, those are going to be our lungs. Okay. And we have blood flowing into the lungs and coming out. Go into the pulmonary veins and bring oxygenated blood into the left atrium. And the great thing about Swangans catheter that we can inflate the balloon for a couple of seconds. Right? If we inflate the balloon, the pressure will drop, but it will not drop to zero because you have amount of blood here, okay? you have vascular resistance, 
And interestingly enough, blood pressure in during inflated sanguine scatter will be pretty close to the number that you will expect to see in the pulmonary vein or left atrium. And that number is 6 to 12 millimeters of mercury. And that's going to be the same number that can be measured in the left atrium. Great. Well, and that is um, pressure in systemic and pulmonary circulations in a nutshell. Uh, let's just quickly go over it so you will remember. All right. Um, blood pressure in a, in a systemic circulation is 120 over 80. Ventricles have no pressure during diastole. So your pressure in the ventricle will be equal to the corresponding circuit uh, in that ventricle. Therefore, left ventricular pressure will be 120 over 0 and right ventricular pressure will be 25 over 0 because ventricle doesn't have to push against high resistance. And pressure in the pulmonary circuit will be 25 over 8. Um, right atrial pressure will have a central venous pressure of 2 to 6 millimeters of mercury and 6 to 12 is the number that can be observed in the pulmonary veins or left atrial pressure. And that number, by the way, it's called wedge pressure. Sometimes it's called as pulmonary artery wedge pressure or pulmonary venous wedge pressure or pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Wedge is just referring to the concept of occlusion uh, of the lumen. So the pressure, that's the pressure that is measured during occlusion of the lumen. And obviously you don't want to keep that balloon inflated for too long. Normally a couple seconds you measure it, you deflate it. Okay, that's how normally it's done. All right, well, thank you and stay focused. Subscribe if you be if you want to be notified about future videos. Otherwise, stay focused, guys.